Hey everybody, it's Cam from the Nerd Book Review. Today I will be reviewing Starlight Jewel, the first book in the Gifts of the Ald Tree series. It came out in 2022, it is 495 pages long, and was written by E.L. Lyons. I believe it was her first book, I'll have to look that up just to make sure. But um, this book, I'm going to really struggle and try to keep myself contained in terms of like how long I spend on the world building magic system and all that stuff. But it was definitely the strength of the book and uh, something that I very much enjoyed. So let's go ahead and real quick read the uh, book blurb. As mentioned in the previous episode, um, you'll see right here when I go to my book blurb how I always have a picture. That'll have the timestamp for when I get to uh, my um, the good, the bad, and my final thoughts. Okay, let's go ahead and read that book blurb. The human city of Minilov is renowned for its lavish balls where nobles bring wealth from distant lands to the Starlight Palace to be romanced and robbed by the half-human hybrids who live below the city. The wealthy guests leave without their treasure and with no memory of their evening, except the unforgettable feelings that bring them back season after season. But the magic of Minilov is built on dark secrets and lies. Axley, a hybrid's assassin and seductress thief, will do anything to protect her human half-brother. The path of blood and chaos she carves will tip the precious balance of Minilov and the world around it. Okay, uh, let's start off with the, uh, the world building. Uh, the important thing is the lore to start off with is that the city of Minilov is the only city where uh, humans and spriggans basically come together. Think like the tree-like creatures uh, that you would uh, associate with, uh, you know, um, I don't know, I guess the Lord of the Rings is a good way to think of them, the, the tree ants, but much smaller, right? Um, the spriggans and humans will occasionally mate. Uh, most of the time it's going to be um, spriggan women and human men um, because human men don't have any negative consequences from uh, sleeping with the, uh, the female spriggans. Uh, when a woman sleeps with a, uh, a male spriggan, it basically wipes her mind and she'll be almost be catatonic. She'll die um, without, you know, being taken care of by others. So there's very few times that a woman will actually mate with a male spriggan. So once again, the backstory of the city of Minilov is it is close to the first forest where spriggans are originate from. And uh, for whatever reason, the, the spriggans and the humans have made it over time. The people who used to control the city called the Ashites, they, I think, encouraged it. Uh, they were very immoral as a group, and they would you, do experiments on spriggans who were nameless, which I'll talk about, as well as using um, a special uh, hybrid that was produced from Rorik, who's the original spriggan, and a human woman. And they would um, basically take memories from people, do lots of really immoral things. Eventually, a group called the Norgans uh, figured out that the Ashites were doing these things, even if they, you know, their memories were wiped, they knew that bad things were happening and figured that it could only be coming from this place. They wiped out the Ashites for the most part, conquered the city of Minilov, but they also killed Rorik's wife. And so then Rorik had uh, basically besieged the city and was starting to kill everybody if the king didn't give up his daughter as a sacrifice. Eventually his daughter leaves on her own will and is sacrificed and Rorik went back into the forest and created what's called the treaty. The treaty basically um, defines what humans can and can't do, the same with spriggans. Spriggans stay in their forest. If humans go into the forest and they're not wanted by the spriggans, then they can be killed. There are roads through the forest that the spriggans have to allow safe passage, and that's how things have been for quite some time now. So that lore is all important, basically, is setting things up as, you know, to the, the whole backstory. So where we're at now is that in the city of Minilov, which is where a good deal of the book takes place, the human uh, spriggan hybrids, they, um, as mentioned in the book blurb, uh, they use their gifts, the magical gifts that they were given, which I will discuss uh, momentarily, and they basically assassinate and rob, and uh, the humans of the city of Minilov allow it to go on because it's mostly just uh, foreigners who come to the city uh, that are uh, robbed or assassinated. As long as the, the hybrids, we'll just call them hybrids from here on out, as long as the hybrids, you know, take 
uh, steal money and do things to uh, visiting people who many of whom know that they're going to get robbed, um, then it's okay, right? They provide taxes to the nobility and to the, uh, to the Norgans, and uh, everyone just kind of has a balance that's been in place for quite some time now. Well, um, there was another little plot before the story takes place where Axley, who's our main character, her father is Rorik, her mother was Ashite, and um, so she was born. They kept her alive so that, uh, that Rorik could um, basically breed with her a second time and produce a second child. Now, they're called the Waiter and the Watcher. They have, you know, more special abilities that the rest of the hybrids don't have. Well, Axley um, finds out about her brother, and she whisks him away, and that's where the book starts, is where uh, she's trying to keep her brother safe, and he's, you know, he's got some issues. He's been treated very poorly as a, uh, when he was little before Axley um, whisked him away. Um, Axley is a very important starlight, Axley um, was the basically second in command of all the hybrids. They call him the Starlight Company. And because of that, um, you know, it was, it was a big betrayal when she left. Uh, the way that uh, the, the hybrids are um, um, situated in Minilov is um, they're part of the company, the Starlight Company. Um, the people who, the hybrids who look most human and have the most gifts are uh, prized by the Spriggans. They're given names. If you are, uh, if you look too much like a Spriggan or you don't have gifts or, you know, you can't do something um, that helps the company out, then you're a nameless. And oftentimes, you know, the Spriggan won't actually give you a name. And so then you live below ground all the time. You don't have a very good life. But the people who look most human and who have the best gifts, they're going to be at the top. And uh, they're starlings and hawks. And they are, um, you know, basically the ruling class of the hybrids. And, you know, all the things that they do help, you know, feed everybody else um, that's, that's a nameless that's below them. So very, you know, it's not like things are, are perfect for hybrids or for anyone in the city even, right? All right, let's go ahead and talk about the magic system, which was the other like real, uh, you know, positive highlight of the book for me. Uh, I'm going to have to look at it because uh, there are a few things. Um, so as once as I mentioned, uh, so Spriggans themselves will have all of these magical abilities, but some humans will get none, some will get most of them, but nobody gets all of them. Um, here they are. Uh, soft step and quick step, you might uh, understand. Soft step is uh, the ability to be quiet while you're walking. Uh, quick step is uh, to be very fast, that they can be as fast as a horse. Uh, keen ears and keen scent. Keen ears you can hear from a very far distance away. Uh, really awesome, obviously, if you're trying to uh, eavesdrop. But um, like if someone, for example, slams a couple shields together or cymbals or drums, something like that, that can actually uh, shatter someone's eardrums, uh, even kill them. So Spriggans aren't very good in real battles if they have keen ears. And keen scent is the same kind of thing. You can smell um, things you can you can pick out individual scents and you can smell things very well positive in terms of uh, you know trying to figure things out but also a real negative if uh, like going into the sewers for example while it would make a lot of people throw up it's really almost incapacitating for a uh, keen scent right then there's two more gifts uh, that are fairly common one's called heart seer where you can actually see someone's aura you can see if they've done evil things so uh, like if you kiss, strangle someone, for example, you're going to have, you know, dark blots on your um, hands. Um, th there can be all kinds of things, right? But uh, if you think bad thoughts, evil thoughts, you can even show up, for example, right? That one um, is pretty cool. And then uh, Night Seer obviously just lets people see in the dark. So um, a lot of people will have like, say, three or four of these um, abilities, but very few people have all of those abilities. Uh, then there's a very, very uh, rare gift. I think only five total hybrids alive at this time have it. It's called a facer, and that's what really allows the Starlight Company to do what they do. Um, if you are touched with someone without a facer um, ability, they're able to take memories from you. So say uh, Axley meets someone, a Mark, and uh, she sleeps with him, and then afterwards, uh, someone who has the facer ability will touch that person and take all memory of Axley away. 
Now it's important for the most part to only do this um, for something that's going to be like one or two days because everyone connected to you is also going to forget that person. So if it's done, you know, for say someone uh, knew someone for like a month, right? And they've talked about them to other people. Well, all those memories are going to be gone once you're effaced. And, um, but the, the, the memories uh, of that person from other people as well. So actually at one point we'll know a family. She'll know like say the, the general's his name. Uh, she'll know him and then his whole family. Well, all of them will forget even though only the general was touched and it causes a bunch of confusion, right? Okay, let's go real quick, go to the plot. The basic plot is, as I've already mentioned, is that Axley and uh, she's trying to keep her brother safe from both the Ashites, but also um, from even the Norgans. Anyone that knows that those two have that ability could exploit them and upset the balance of everything. So before the story started, Axley has uh, left the city of Minilov. Um, and it, she killed some people on the way out. Uh, what's funny, the way their morality works too, is it's not a big deal that she killed them. It's more that she uh, stole from the company because those people that she killed had quite a few gifts. And so, you know, they were helping bring money into the company. Axley is a courtesan. Uh, she basically is, you know, high class prostitute. It's important to know in this whole story that uh, that's not considered a negative thing as far as the the hybrids go. Um, hybrids and spriggans are v just naturally sexually attracted to humans. Um, in some cases, they basically almost can't help themselves. So morally, it's not considered you know a bad thing for them to be prostitutes. Um, there will be nobles that will come from you know far away that will uh, purposefully be. Um, you know, effaced after spending a night with one because you're left with your feelings, even if you don't have your memories. So they'll have great feelings, right, of, an, of a wonderful evening. So being a prostitute is not, you know, a social, uh, socially a bad thing in this case, in this book. I've definitely spent too long already, but let's get to the bad, the good, and my final thoughts. The one thing in terms of the bad that I could, that I would really um, say was an issue for me is that it's really a lot thrown at you real fast in terms of um, you hit the ground running. You have to remember all kinds of different magical abilities um, from the very beginning. They're told to you almost immediately in the story. And it's hard sometimes for me personally to remember details. I, I don't know. Maybe part of it's because I've read a lot of books. You know, I read a lot, 10 books a month. You know, sometimes a little bit of those kind of details are I struggle with. I also had some pretty severe concussions <laughs> when I was younger. So my, I don't exactly have the, uh, an iron trap of a mind, of a memory. So I struggled with that a little bit. Another funny one, this was just a detail thing. You know how I mentioned that I sometimes get focused on it, is like it's pretty common that like several coffers of jewels will be stolen at a time. It feels like people have to have just a shit ton of jewels if for that to be the case. When one of the uh, you know more important characters, Grimm, is trying to get weapons from the very beginning, these Spriggan weapons are magically enchanted. They're better than normal weapons. Uh, he brings like 11 chests of jewels. It just feels like the things must be crazy expensive in the city of Minilov if uh, the Starlight Company is constantly stealing jewels and needs to keep on stealing jewels in order to... Um, uh, you know, feed everybody. It just feels like it's a crazy number. And I don't know, that's just a, a weird, you know, thing to me. But otherwise, I think the biggest thing is just so much gets thrown at you so fast. But but I think that for the most part, like, that's the real, um, you know, issue for me was just trying to remember everything. By the time I got, you know, like, say 30, 40 percent in, I had things pretty well, you know, down. But it did, I mean, I, I think that probably most people would do a better job than me. But, you know, uh, just my memory issues. Now, in terms of the good, um, the magic system obviously is amazing. I loved it. Uh, the world building is really good. I feel like uh, we get that lore um, just done in such a great way in a, um, a as we're going through. Like there's no info dumps in this case, I didn't feel like. Or maybe the times when there are info dumps, it's like when they're journeying. So you know how it's already slower during a journey for the most part in a book. Well, you know, it felt like a... That felt like a good point to also throw in a lot of this lore while she's talking to other people as they journey. Uh, I really felt like that journeying part uh, was done pretty well also. And then I also like Axley a lot, our main character. She's morally gray. Um, she does what she does. Uh, you know, she can make some poor decisions, 
But I feel like the romance part of it, even though it's not like a, a good stable relationship, isn't uh, done in the way that like that it's mostly done, where you know they fight or they don't tell each other things, and so I felt like even that was handled pretty well. Now let's go ahead and give my final thoughts. On the one hand, uh, this is a book that I should love because it's got an awesome magic system and it's got cool world building. It's unique. That whole, you know, like Spriggan human interactions and the hybrids. Uh, the city of Minilov really felt alive and I loved the scenes underground where, you know, the nameless Spriggans, uh, where the nameless hybrids live. And I also liked most of the characters. I liked a lot of the secondary characters. There's a lot of nuance. Uh, none of the characters are just purely good or purely bad. Um, everybody does what they do because they think it's for the best for the people that they're supposed to be um, helping, right? So even though a lot of bad things will happen, um, a lot of people <laughs> will get murdered. A lot of people are going to die in this book. Um, it's still, people do what they do for a reason. There's no one just, you know, being an asshole to be an asshole. Uh, this is on the same token. Um, there's long stretches where there isn't a ton of action. And I feel like this is a book too, that has, uh, that doesn't fit very well into one genre, but I think that that's a positive in this case where, uh, you know, there is a little bit of that romantic element, but that's certainly, you know, not the focus there's probably only like two or three like truly romantic scenes. Um, this book, in some ways, is a political thriller. It's an in, it's got a lot of intrigue and mystery. There are a few um, twists and turns, and as we move along, and in a lot of ways, this book is basically just about relationships. So I, I kind of feel like it's more like that um, that like a movie genre of like a political thriller, um, you know, slash uh, drama. Just, I think a drama would be a good way to describe this book, um, more so than like, you know, than in a lot of other, uh, I just feel like that movie thing fits better than a lot of the other book genres. All in all, though, I just felt like it was executed very, very well. Uh, my f initial thoughts were, I was trying to decide whether uh, this was going to be like a 9 or a 10, uh, definitely a 5 star for me, and you have to sit there and kind of think like, this book is different and unique. Um, most of the time, if I have to decide and really think about whether a book's a 10 or not, it's not. But over the last couple of days, I have really keep thinking about this book, and I've really just enjoyed it. So I think I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. I don't know quite how to describe this of like whether I recommend this to a ton of people. Um, if you are a Grimdark fan, there is a lot of murder and a lot of... Um, you know, morally gray characters. If you are a romanticy fan, um, I think that you would like this. I, I know the the author has said that she has trouble like trying to figure out how to market this book and what genre to put it in, which makes a lot of sense to me. Like I really do feel like this is a hard one to to just write things down and talk about and and kind of figure out where you're gonna go with it. But I just kind of feel like a lot of people would like this book if they gave it a shot. Um, I know that E.C. Greaves, Ed Greaves, uh, the daughter of the Beast books, right? He read this book, really loved it, and offered to do artwork. So the uh, drawings that you're going to see came from Ed. I love that that was the case. And so I feel like this is a book that even a lot of men um, that wouldn't think they would like it would like it. I mean, I know that um, I've read a lot of books lately that I think that 10 years ago I wouldn't have enjoyed, but I feel like I might have still enjoyed this book 10 years ago when I was in my real hard grimdark phase because it is darker. So, uh, you know, I think that I would recommend this book to far more people than, um, than I might, you know, initially think of. All in all, uh, really big fan of this book, glad that I read it, and um, I think that if you give it a shot, you're going to enjoy it too. All right, everyone, I hope you have a wonderful time. I hope you have a great time reading. Thank you much.